Now, how hard was your weekend? Now, does it compare to this? Locking the scrum for the Southern team on Saturday afternoon, and then in the evening, equal top scoring for the Southern Sharks. And then when we try and find the man involved today, he's out in the dairy farm and he's carving. So, of course, we're talking about Roger Newell. He's had a sensational weekend, being on two winning Southern teams. A very warm welcome and congratulations, Roger. Thank you. Great. When you look back in 10 years' time, what are you going to say about this day? Um, the rugby be one I'll always remember. It's uh, the first first division win I've had, and getting a good 40 minutes here was was a good buzz. And uh, to be involved in the basketball, how that, how did that happen? How did that come about anyway? I've always been involved yeah. from when I was at school, and uh, just sort of carried it through. Love of the game. Now I didn't think you on Thursday though. I didn't know if you were really sure you were going to be there or not. No, I actually went along to tell them that I was going to pull out and uh, there weren't many at training so I thought I'd have a run and then turned up on Saturday night to tell them I was too sore to, to play and got roped into it so it was, uh, that was a good day. I bet you have no regrets now when no, you think no, back on it. Absolutely. Now that game at the Homestead, that was really crucial for the team. How, how important really was it? Well, it set the season off for a good start and uh, laid the platform for the rest of the season. Now we just got to go on from there. What's the team morale from you know within the team after that game? What was it like? Uh, very good. The um, the three game tour that we went on sort of laid the platform for that, and uh, all the boys get on really well on and off the field. It started to show through on Saturday, and uh, the boys are sort of busting their butt to get there and help one another. So it's uh, no, it's really good. Thank you, Rose. That's the way we certainly saw it as well. So let's go now to the homestead and take a look at that highlights of Southland against Wellington. Here's the highlights.
Jerry. Relief. <laughs> it was a hell of a game, wasn't it? That build up to that drive was about 80 minutes long. I know, well they really deserved it then. It was a gutsy 10 minutes that last one. Fantastic, I'm really pleased with them. Well, your reaction there, Roger Newell, to the try, where were you? I was in the bottom there somewhere. Um, yeah, just had to watch it on TV to find out who had actually scored it and <laughs> how it was done. So, yeah. yeah. You were in that first drive and, and the collapse and then Davin got up again and took off with it. Yeah, I was in there somewhere and then the whistle went, so I wasn't quite sure what had happened until I pulled my head out. <laughs> That's the way of all true locks. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there was a lot of little team chats going on and huddles before that. What was happening in that lead-up? That last 10 minutes, you could just feel that something was happening. Well, Davin just pulls the boys into a huddle to um, sort out line-out calls or decide whether or not we want to give the ball to the backs or what to do with it. If anyone's got any problems, you, you bring them up then to get them sorted out. Team chats in the middle of the crowd with the, with the game and a cliffhanger and he's got time for any problems. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's the place to get them sorted out is, is uh, when you're in the huddle, all the boys help out. And, and obviously he must have decided that he wanted to score that try. That must have come through clearly in the huddle, did it? Oh, Devin always <laughs> likes scoring tries. So it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, like, it wouldn't have mattered who scored it. it was, uh, the plan was to keep it in hand for the rest of the game, was it? For the last five or so minutes, you seemed to have it. To keep it tight, and, and yeah. uh, we had to lift the intensity, the pace of the game. And uh, we done managed to do that quite well. Well, you gave us all an absolute thrill along the way, but you didn't get a chance to celebrate with the guys then. That must have hurt. Oh, I managed to sneak a few quiet spates down <laughs> after the rugby, but... Um, <laughs> So they had to watch it and then away to basketball. So. Now, then away to the basketball. And now that was another, another great thing too because you said you, you were hoping you wouldn't have to play but then circumstances intervened again. Yeah, well, Kenny, he broke down with about uh, three minutes into the first half. <laughs> oh, so I got the call up then and... Um, yeah, there was <laughs> no looking back from there on in. So it was what was it actually like for your, your body to pick up after a game of rugby? I don't know if it's ever been done before anywhere in the world, but to, what does it actually feel like for your body to kick into motion to another high-intense game? Uh, it was pretty hard. My legs were absolutely dead and uh, my lungs were screaming. But sort of had to call for a few quick subs and that. But um, sort of 10, 10 minutes into it, I was uh, coming right. I managed to stick it out. Now you've always shone as a good rebounder, good tall man with good presence around under the basket, but you also shone uh, on Saturday night as a shooter. So let's pick up on some of that action. Here's Roger Newell in action for the Southern Sharks, playing against Otago in the blue. And there you are, that good position. How, how did that? Is that part of the team that you talked about that you were trying to engender? Yeah, shooting's just finishing up off the work that everyone else has done. It's sort of more of a bonus. And the rest of the team are doing the job. And here we go again, taking possession off, off Otago. And a very young team here too, Roger. On Thursday night you were, you were very intense. You weren't smiling at all. Bit of leadership there. Yeah, the young fellas, they seem to relax a bit at training. and They all... Uh, there you are again, second goal from Roger in two minutes. Great stuff. Yep. Yeah, they all um, they train really well. They shoot the ball a lot and everything seems to go good for them. And then when they step onto the court, they seem to pull into their shells. So if you try and keep things intense at trainings, they, um, they can take that into the game. Because it's a different world out there, it's, it's so hard, isn't it? Well, it is a, a training, you know one another and what you're going to do and you know how you can beat the, the, the man next to you. But when you're playing a real game, you don't know what the opposition are going to do or where they're going to be. So um, you really got to stay switched on and focused. And, uh, now, yeah. do you, now, I heard you say before that some of your farming experience on the dairy farm actually helps, helps you with that tough mental attitude out on the paddock and on the court. Yeah, you, you've got to stay focused and hard and things don't always go according to plan on the farm and that sort of thing. So, and if she rains on the farm, you've still got to get out there? You've still got to be out there and doing it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, like it's in the old grey matter. And so, yeah. if you've got that tuned up, you'll go all right. Now I'm going to ask you an obvious and easy question, I would have thought. Which is the physically the harder, the basketball or the rugby? Um, it's, yeah, it's a tough one. Probably the basketball, you get more knocks that you feel, like uh, elbows, knees, hips. Um, more pain in, in indoor basketball. I think you might have shocked the rugby fraternity there, Roger. <laughs> you get in under the hoop there and people are rebounding you. 